Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, has launched a review uh, into the law uh, concerning uh, treatment of women at abortion clinics. Women are, well, they're facing protesters often outside abortion clinics when they are going about what they're totally legally allowed to do, which is to terminate a pregnancy. Uh, new measures are now being considered to protect pregnant women from being harassed and intimidated by uh, what have been called aggressive pro-life campaigners who surround abortion clinics. Uh, some women have been called murderers. Uh, they've been uh, met with signs showing distressing and graphic images of fetuses as they enter the building. Now, the review could give police, healthcare providers and local councillors the power to protect these women uh, by actually having an exclusion area, a buffer zone outside the clinics to safeguard pregnant women. Well, let's uh, talk about this with uh, two I guess uh, we're going to talk up to uh, the Claire Murphy uh, from the British Pregnancy Advisory Service in just a moment. Uh, first up, let's talk to Dr. Anthony McCarthy, who's Director of Communications and Education for SPARC. That's the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. Uh, Dr. Anthony McCarthy, thanks for joining us. Um, what do you make of these new laws? It seems very clear, doesn't it? Women going about what they're legally entitled to do to terminate a pregnancy, as is allowed uh, under our law, shouldn't face harassment and protest about it, should they? Well, I think that they shouldn't face harassment and nobody on the pro-life side uh, that I'm aware of thinks that they should. Um, so one has to ask, why do we need you know, pushes possibly for legislation to try and stop people from peacefully handing out information and offering help? But the reality is, and I've seen this in a clinic very near where I work, actually, and I've actually spoken to those protesters on a daily basis uh, about it. Peacefully handing out information is one thing, but actually often the women who are going to get an abortion are in a very traumatised state. Uh, it's not, I think for most women, it's not something women want to do. It's often the, in the doing, it's the least worst option. They may uh, uh, be, you know, uh, no, no financial or, or emotional position to have a child, an accident. You don't know whether it's been the result of a, of a traumatic occurrence assault. You have no idea about the nature of why these women are getting abortions. Uh, there is an argument if you want to change the law for you to protest at Parliament, but there's no reason to be protesting and handing out information to women at an abortion clinic when they are going about their, you know, exercising their legal rights. Well, what you're generally talking about is a peaceful vigil, so it's, it's not even a protest in the ordinary sense, and it's uh, an offer of help uh, which is not persistently made. Uh, by groups. Now, if there has been harassment and, and all these things that we hear about, where are the police cases? Where is the evidence? Where is, you know, th these things are filmed. And the fact of the matter is, nothing is being brought forward. But the abortion industry very much doesn't want people talking about the reality of abortion and offering help to women. Many women have had babies because of this help. And many women, even BPAS themselves say 15% of women changed their minds at the last minute. So this is a very uh, difficult time, obviously, for women. And uh, what I think pro-life uh, uh, people are saying is there is help. There isn't, you know, abortion is a hopeless so-called solution. And there is help, and people oh. are quite within their rights to offer that it's, help. It's look, hey, no, I don't anyone anyone who's got any any sense of morality thinks that abortion is a, is a good thing. As I say, it's the least worst thing for many well, women. Well, BPAS think it's a good thing. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll get. We'll, be welcomed or celebrated. We, we'll you know? we'll get to them. But you say offer of help, but it's all very well. If you're talking about a 17 year old who's got pregnant by accident, is having to maybe uh, you know, leave education, uh, and and is up you know up in a in, in a bed sit with with a, with a three month old screaming and crying at four in the morning. Are you know, are you offering help there and then? Because I don't think your organisation well, is, is it? Well, it's not my organisation. Uh, we don't do vigils, but uh, certainly uh, the Good Council Network does offer. Uh, uh, um, as much help as they can, and many women have benefited. And what they've basically been reminded of, there is somebody out there who cares. There is somebody who thinks pregnancy is a good thing and having a child is a good thing, and it's so good that they need to actually support women rather than just say, yep, there's only one solution, and that's abortion, which we know damages women. OK, Anthony, uh, you stay on the line, if you will, please. Let's talk to Claire Murphy. She's uh, from the British Pregnancy Advisory Service. Um, Anthony says that your organisation does welcome abortion. You do think it's a good thing, and they are arguing that, well, it isn't, and they've got every right, uh, as anyone else would have, to, to have a peaceful vigil, they call it, uh, outside uh, an abortion clinic. What do you say? Well, we absolutely think it's a good thing that women uh, in that situation have the ability to make a choice about what's right for them. So that's whether to continue that pregnancy uh, or whether to end it by abortion. We absolutely think that, that women being able to make a decision, their own decision, uh, in those circumstances is extremely important. And I think it's interesting to note that 
Anthony himself notes that, you know, a significant number of women actually who come through BPAS clinics, who talk to our staff, uh, who have the opportunity to talk through their decision, actually do make the choice uh, to continue that pregnancy. Uh, they've decided to come to BPAS. They want to talk to BPAS about the, the situation they're in. They want to know what their options are. We're a regulated service. We're regularly inspected by the Care Quality Commission. Uh, we have to carry out services in accordance with very specific standards laid out uh, in the law and regulation. Uh, and that's the experience that, that women are offered, you know, a, a highly uh, regulated um, service in which they're given all the information they need to make the choice that is right for them. But what they don't need and what they often find extremely distressing is having to encounter people who they haven't chosen uh, to encounter on their way into uh, clinics. And I think... Um, I mean, Auntie talks about it always being a peaceful vigil. I mean, that's not really the experience of most women uh, who come across this. It's having leaflets or, or plastic fetuses uh, shoved into their hands. It's sometimes being called murderer. It's being accosted. It's, it's all kind of things that actually, on what you said, is, is already for some women an extremely difficult day to have to endure that. Um, just, you know, it causes upset, it causes anxiety, and it causes distress. What level of protest or vigil would you think was acceptable, given that, you know, if people are not actually threatening or inciting violence, uh, with the right of protest is a key part of a democracy. Um, you know, you talk about choice for women to have an abortion, or well, the choice of people to protest and say, look, if someone honestly believes, whether for religious or other reasons, that, that this is murder, and there are a Many, there are billions of people on the planet who do believe that. Um, if they believe it is murder, in which case um, they, they surely have a right to, to make their views known. Where and how would you think it's acceptable for them to do that? Yeah, so I actually feel very strongly that the space outside a clinic is not the place for that. I think we do live in a democracy, and I think there are all sorts of places and ways in which people who hold these beliefs, I and mean, we were talking about a very small number of, of people, actually, who really believe that um, women should be denied the right to an abortion. Um, but, you know, absolutely, I absolutely respect their right to that opinion, and I encourage them, you know, to make their feelings known, to, you know, to write to their MPs, to protest outside of Parliament, um, you know, to, to hold meetings and, 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 you know, and go into towns and, and, and spread the word. By all means, do that. But the place and space outside a clinic is simply not appropriate. But the, the space outside a clinic is not some kind of political theatre. You know, these are real women trying to make decisions about their own lives. And I think the point that, that you made is really important, that the people who stand outside clinics, they have no idea about why that individual woman is going in to make the decision that, that, that is right for her. Okay, they well, know nothing about her circumstances. Let's put that back to Dr. Anthony McCarthy. I mean, she, Claire makes a lot of very valid points. You know, you've got the right to protest. People have the right to have abortion. But, you know, this isn't the place for, and you say your organisation do it, but other organisations with similar views do, that this isn't the time or the place. Well, I mean, I, I, I always find it amusing when people say that they really believe in the right to protest, except for the particular... Uh, industry that they happen to make money from, or or, or, or their interest, and I think it's um. You know, well, she no, but she didn't you say you. No, no, right no, no, no. Claire didn't say you don't have a right to protest. Well, no, you have. You don't have a right to protest anywhere near the premises where we carry out our business. Well, if a bank says you don't have the right to hand out leaflets anywhere near the bank about the bonuses of the bankers, I don't take them very seriously when they talk about a right to protest. Similarly here. And you think and that here, people course, going into a bank, well, you think that people going into a bank is akin to someone going in to terminate a no, pregnancy? No, no, I'm thinking that there's a no, principle but it isn't about, the same, is there's it? a principle about a right to protest, and that does remain the same. But what we're primarily talking about is not even a right to protest. It's about peacefully giving information to people that are deprived of that information. But I've seen a lot of those leaflets. I, I've seen them handed out by the by people who, who were protesters uh, outside a clinic near, near me in Southwark, where I work uh, in South London. And, and they are, look, they're graphic pictures. Now, uh, look, as someone who's lost four babies to miscarriage, I am very aware of how much a, even a few weeks old fetus looks like a baby. I certainly know what a 12-week-old fetus looks like as a baby. I've seen the photographs of my own mm -hmm. dead baby. So I, I am very aware of this but the reality well, a lot is of, no, a but... lot of people who've had abortions say that say that that was not the case and that they weren't aware and they felt they were lied to 
and in the VFAS clinics and elsewhere, you know, the ultrasound things are not shown to them, etc. Well, so isn't there's, okay, there's but then isn't that an argument for you? Maybe then you should you should be campaigning, and groups like yours should be campaigning uh, to to Parliament about whether or not this information should be made well, aware and it should all, be required people, to be given well, to women people, before they have an abortion. People do campaign all the time for all these sort of things. What we're talking about here is people. You know, a woman is about to make a huge life-changing decision. And we believe, along with many other people, that they are not treated well by an industry that uh, does not tell them the truth about the reality of the abortion. And people are making efforts to say there is help available. BFAS is not offering people, you know, clothing and, and help and financial assistance to keep their babies. OK, BPAS is a business and it wants to, you know, keep a good turnover. But there's, there are lots of other reasons. There are, there are lots of other reasons. Sure. Who, well, I know women who've had abortions in their teenage years, women who've had them with their students, women who've had them in their 30s and even early 40s because they just didn't feel it was yeah. something that was right for them. These well, weren't, e these weren't, no, but these weren't saying, easy decisions, but they sure, but they're entitled no to make offer them. Help. Is that what you're saying? I mean, no one should offer help to somebody. At, at a point. So what do you say to all the women who have babies now who are very, very grateful that that help was there? You don't hear them on the I'm, well, I'm wondering Why realistically I mean, like, how much help these right? women are being offered on a day-to-day -day basis it's when they've got a screaming child and no money to pay well, for anything they, at three they, in the morning. Offered, they are offered infinitely more help than BPAS ever give them. But, no, but fundamentally, this is all about, look, this is, this is about fundamentally what comes down to sort of often a religious uh, position and a position that has been rejected by our country. There, there is, people are largely, all the polling shows, people in Britain are largely in favour of the abortion laws as they are. Claire Murphy, let me give the final word to you as, as from the British Pregnancy Advisory Service. Anthony says, look, you know, you're, you're an industry. You don't care about these women. You don't care about these babies. You're just about making money. What do you say to that? I, I just, I think it's offensive. Um, we care deeply about supporting women to make the choice that is right for them at that point in their life, whether that's to end the pregnancy uh, or continue it. We're a charity. We don't make money out of our services. We provide services because we support women's choice. And I think the problem is, is that women's choice is something that Anthony cannot accept. And can I just, can I just say that in terms of offering help to women, um, I, I don't think anyone is suggesting that that people shouldn't be allowed to go about and you know and 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 make and make circumstances better for pregnant women. That actually, for some women, I mean, I, I completely take your point when you say. Uh, whether it's teenagers or students or women in their 30s who know that actually it's not about have I got the money or have I got enough clothing or have I got a cot. You know, for, for, for these women know they are not in a position to have a baby at that point in their, in their life. But there will be women for whom actually, you know, the, the um, more benefits or more financial support would make, would make the difference. And we absolutely think it's right that, um, you know, that there's advocacy for that. But that doesn't, that is not something that needs to take place outside, outside uh, uh, All right, we'll leave it there. Claire Murphy, Director of External Affairs at the British Pregnancy Advisory Service. Also, thank you to Dr. Anthony McCarthy. He's uh, from the uh, Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. I have to be clear, they, they don't actually carry out these vigils, these protests themselves, uh, but other organisations with similar viewpoints do. So thank you very much to both of them for that.